Yo, Elliot, what advice do you have for handling a toxic mother-in-law? To give you some context, my mother, my wife lost her father several years ago before we met. Her father was the definition of a patriarch. He was a strong man, good provider, and was loved and respected by his family and community. As a result, her mother has become very bitter towards life. She has a victim's mentality, lives in a constant scarcity mindset, is negative about everything and holds grudges against people, including myself. My wife does not get along with her mother and recognizes that she's toxic. I moved our family away from Babylon the Great, a.k.a. California. <laughs> All of the U.S. is Babylon, bro. Uh, where she grew up to start our own life and have a very clear boundary with her mother. Despite the fact my wife is still, by her own admission, happier than she's ever been in her life, my mother-in-law is still resentful towards me for taking her daughter away. Tells people I turned her daughter against her and tries to make us feel guilty about abandoning her as a poor widow. As a Christian husband, do I owe her anything? Does my wife owe her anything? So... Advice for handling a toxic mother-in-law. And do you owe her anything when you remove her from your life? I want to tread lightly here with this. The truth is that you don't owe her anything. You elevated her status as a woman by taking on her daughter and making her a grandmother and her daughter a mother you blessed her family already if she if she is a woman who lost her husband and can't give her daughter away well now she's got two problems i lost the man through which i created life and i have a daughter who is sterile and un providing of life you've done a ton for this woman remember that and that you don't owe her anything because you gave her a great gift of marrying her daughter i want that perspective to be understood i know that we live in this world today feminism rules and nobody looks at it that way but there is a stigma and i think it should come back a, a traditional stigma against unfruitful women. You're an old, barren maid. Eh, no children. Now, I don't know if she has other uh, children and, and grandchildren, but you continue to make her family tree a fruitful tree. That's a beautiful thing. Not only that, you interjected value into the tree by leading his, her daughter out of chaos and sin and protecting her under the mantle of your Christian masculinity. You've done great service to this woman. Don't ever forget that. Don't think just because you're not uh, allowing her whining to jar you or letting her complaining to uh, distract you that you haven't done great things for her. And I think it, you do owe it to her to be concerned for her well-being. This is the mother of your wife. Without her, you wouldn't have the gift of your wife. Let's turn, it, turn the table that way too. She gave you the best thing in your life. Me and my mother-in-law, we are at odds. We don't agree on many things. And it's only gotten a little worse and weirder as I moved her daughter away by two hours. But I always harbor goodwill towards her. I, want good, I, I genuinely want good things for her because I'm grateful that she gave me my wife. This woman is at odds and confused and different 
as we may be, thank you. You, whatever it is, you did, you gave me this amazing woman, and I'm grateful for that. Thank you. Yeah? Of course, there's the grace of God that's associated with it. The grace of God, the hand of God that allows these things to unfold the way they do, um, even if they look bad on paper, right? Crazy mom, but she's got a great daughter, right? So, do I owe her anything as her mother? You, I think you owe her gratitude. And I think you've also shown her and given her great gifts. And so your next, and so I would, I would remove, I would remove any sense of guilt. I wouldn't have any guilt. I wouldn't have any shame. You're doing okay now. If she's dying as a lonely, starving widow living by herself, and she's falling and breaking her hip, and nobody calls her or talks to her, or she's, you know, being abused in a in a in a in a hospital home, an old folks home or she's you know, eating dog food to get by, I'd, say, I'd, I'd cringe at that. I'd say, ooh, uh, bro, send her some money. Help her out a little bit. Yeah, she ain't dying. Help her out a little bit. I think it'll be good. You know, Even if she has to stay over there, send some money or hire, yes, yeah, she's living fine, he says. She's living fine, she's living fine, she's all right. The only way I would have said that you need to step in there is it, just to make sure that she's well. It is, it's, 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 it's out of charity and gratitude that you want to see that she's doing well. She's doing well. Okay, she's fine. Is she uh, emotionally content? Well, it doesn't matter. She doesn't need to be. No woman is ever emotionally content. And, she, and, and the thing is, she's struggled. She suffered. Her husband died. Have compassion for her. But you do not need to bring her into your house. You do not need to be spending hours on the phone with her. You do not need to be bending to her will. You do not need to have her uh, pouring out her negativity on your children and in your home. And it's another thing that, you know, I, this is more my wife in her relationship to her mother than anything. It's like, well, you know, I love you, but from afar. You, you stay over there. I don't, I would, I would, here's this is something from my father too. This is what he says. He says, i rather not know what you're doing so that I can still love you. i rather not that we have too much going on between us because if we do, I'm going to get, I'm not going to be very happy. I'm, this is not going to be a good relationship. So i better, I better off just not knowing what's going on in your life. And when we see each other, we're on nice terms. We're on nice terms. I don't want to have conversations about anything that's charged because you know, you're going to lose and it's going to be ugly and I'd rather not that be the case. <laughs> Does my wife owe her anything? I think your wife owes her a listening ear from time to time. Once a week, she should call her mom. I think that's nice. Call your mom if you have to have a glass of wine before you do so. <laughs> Whatever. But it's nice to call your mom, it's nice to talk to your mom, and then when you get off the phone with her, you, you remember like in Men in Black, that thing that they push that button and then you erase your brain? Beep, erase your, erase your brain. Tell her, erase your brain, and then come back, and then we'll go about the rest of our day. Does that make sense? I hope that helps, dude. Yeah, <laughs> maybe two glasses. Good. So, but that's her responsibility. That's not your responsibility. You have nothing to do with that. That's your wife's responsibility. As long as your wife now isn't getting off the phone with her and then she's shedding her nastiness on you because she just got off the phone with her mom. You, she, your wife needs to know how, not, how to detach that. Okay, off, off the phone with mom, now I'm done. If she start whining and complaining and pouring her heavy burden on you after she get off the phone with her mom, well then you got to draw a line somewhere and say, okay, that's it. You're not allowed to talk to your mom no more. <laughs> All right, dude. Hope that helps. Done.